welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome. My name is Gabrielle. I also go by Gaby. And here on the channel, we are Miss TCH. And I am so excited that you joined me today on this video. I am super pumped to be recording this video because if you've been following me for a while, you remember the video that I posted at the end, I think, of 2018, where I was sharing with you all my journey with church. And if you haven't seen that, you might want to pause the video right here and go watch that for context because I'll really just kind of be talking on top of what I was already sharing in that video. Um, but yeah, if you remember, I kind of went through all of the reasons why I had actually stopped attending church for um, a period of time. It actually ended up being much longer than I had originally um thought it would be and I remember sharing in there how you know I was born and raised in the church like practically birthed inside of the church building like my family we all grew up in church my parents had major roles in our local church and kind of my journey with church hurt and really um kind of just having my eyes opened in kind of the worst way and I shared with you all kind of my journey about trying to find a church since then it had been kind of tough and then I came to Columbus and had an interesting experience <laughs> at a local church and just kind of was tired. I ended up, you know, almost going to every church, at least that's what it felt like, every possible church in Columbus trying to find a church home. So I'm finishing up uh, my third year living in Columbus. It's kind of crazy to say. I've been here for almost three years. Um, but yeah, I just... Well, I don't want to spill the beans yet. But anyways, when I first moved here, I went to a church for about a year. Ended up leaving because I was just witnessing a lot of interesting things. Again, if you want to know more about that, go watch the first video. And was really trying to find a church home. It just felt like I was going everywhere. And there was not necessarily, I don't want it to come off like I was shopping for a perfect church with perfect people that did everything perfect like I wasn't shopping for a church like literally the things that I talked about in the first video were very basic to me there were there were things that like if, if we call ourselves believers at all we should at least be doing these things like bare minimum some of those might have been extracurricular but for the most part they were all pretty bare minimum not too much to ask type things that I was sharing about my concerns about just the trends of church these days and what I was witnessing while I was looking around Columbus trying to find a church. And so yeah, during that time when I was outside of going to church, I still would listen to church. So I want to shout out right now my internet pastors that literally carried me during that period of me not having a church home or anywhere to attend. And that is, first of all, Pastor Michael Todd from Transformation Church. If you've been around this channel for any amount of time, you've heard me say his name before, you've heard me quote him before. I have several videos that are related to the things that he says because he's just, he's awesome. So Pastor Michael Todd from Transformation Tur Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I believe. Um, and then Pastor John Gray from uh, Relentless Church in, where are they at? Are they in South Carolina? They're in South Carolina. And then number three, Pastor Stephen Furtick um, from Elevation Church, and I think they're in North Carolina. Those three, man, got me through. Also with the side of Sarah J Jakes Roberts um, and her husband, I follow their church. I think it's the Potter's House 1 LA. And so their sermons got me through too, but th those, those pastors, really encouraged me and by listening to them it really was like helping me to stay connected to the vine and to just continue to receive a word not completely be disconnected from the body it was a blessing to be able to be poured into by them and i still listen to all three of them podcast version youtube videos when i have the time um or in passing when i'm driving places so they still speak to me i still call them my internet pastors because yeah, they just, they really helped me during that time. But I will be honest and say during that time, it was hard. Like, I kind of hit on it a little bit in the video, but I had just started the journey when I first did that video. I remember I would visit um, 
a church every once in a blue moon with a friend of mine who was also looking for a church but it was very rare for the most part i was home on sunday mornings and so it was tough for so many reasons especially after being in the routine of i go to church on sundays like that's what i do um not religiously or you know because i felt like i had to but it's just i look forward to being at church on sunday i look forward to being in a body um, or amidst the body of Christ, like in community with people. Like that's just, that's how I grew up. That's the only way I know it. It's the only way it feels good. Like I just, I love it. And so by not experiencing that, it did get really um, depressing at times. And I use that word lightly. I mean, you all know I am a psychologist, so I, I'm not throwing around the word depression um, lightly, but I use that word very intentionally because um, it was very hard for me to process my emotions around not being connected to a church. So I say that to say that, you know, I would listen to a sermon or watch live, you know, one of those pastors that I shared with you and, you know, I'd be super into it and just worshiping and feeling breakthrough like, okay, Lord, yes, like you're speaking to me and just feel really connected in that moment. And I would hear the word and it would be so in tune with me. And I'm like, yes, okay, I'm going to use this to stay encouraged throughout my week. Like, I would just be, I would be fired up. And then five minutes or ten minutes after, literally, sometimes as much as an hour, but right after the sermon, I would start to feel those symptoms of depression or sadness or it was just like a wave of like loneliness would come over me. And I would sometimes break down, like I would remember. I would break down, one, because I would be angry that, you know, I'm in this place um, of feeling lonely and, and disconnected from the body, which is not what I desire. But also, two, it would come from a place of, like, I'm, I'm upset that because I'm in the stage of life, it felt like the word wasn't sticking. And it's totally possible for God to speak to us on our own, but I think I got used to my faith being attached to a church community um, to a certain extent that it felt like my faith had taken a hit by not being in church community. So it's much easier for me to feel hopeless or um, to get disappointed or doubtful or whatever and kind of fall back into just feeling like I can't get through whatever it is that I was going through. And so I would be mad that like that energized feeling that I felt like while I was watching was gone so quick. Like it was so frustrating for me and I shared on there that when you're disconnected from the church house I think you do have to work a little harder in your relationship with Christ you should already have a relationship with Christ outside of the church house do not get me wrong but I feel like when you're not connected to the body and you're trying to carry that weight by yourself God didn't design that for our faith to be like that like he designed for us to be in community with other believers so when you're not you have to kind of carry another load and make sure you're extra extra connected to the vine um and really seeking out that that christ community so i i wasn't 100 percent with that i really feel like i struggled with that um i knew like lord i need to draw into you more i need to be praying more i need to be more connected i need to be working harder since i'm not in a church house but i was easily discouraged i was easily disappointed at times and then the other thing is i i was scared because i started to feel myself getting comfortable with the idea of not getting up for church on sunday because you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going anywhere. So it became comfortable for me to, you know, maybe sleep in and watch the service later on in the day, which is not necessarily an issue. But, um, you know, it just became like part of my routine sort of like, oh, yeah, it's Sunday and I'm not getting up and going to church. And it just felt really gross. It felt really gross. I continued to seek God about like, Lord, I believe that you want me in church community. I believe that you want me serving at a church and I'm just like trying not to give up hope, Lord. So like I'm believing, like help me. And I had my mom praying and her prayer warriors praying and like my friends praying and all this stuff. And then huh, another shout out to my awesome pastor, Pastor Michael Todd, Transformation Church. He did the Crazy Faith series and my friends and I actually um, started getting together and watching them weekly with each other and kind of going through the sermon because it was just, if you watch that series, I think I mentioned it on here before, I'll link it. That series, it's like 20 sermons and we didn't know it was going to be that long when we first started. But 
it just was so powerful and anointed and so we were like we gonna jump in while the water is hot okay so um we started meeting and we made our own crazy faith list which is actually something that pastor michael Todd i think told everybody to do so we made our list we made kind of like what we're believing god for like now like within a month within a year um i think that might have been how we did it i might still have the list on here i did find it okay so we did a crazy faith list and we said what we're believing god for this week this month and this year because it was just like we're not doing this passive stuff like if we really gonna believe god and have crazy faith then we're gonna do it um and so i made that list and i put within this month a church home um and i also put it this is funny i also put it under the this year because it's like okay if he doesn't do it within the month you know i can still have crazy faith to believe he'll do it within the year and at this point so this was what's the date on this this was august 18th that i made that list and september of 2018 is when i left the church that i was at here in columbus so almost a year you guys of not having a church home and so I put that on my list and like I said it was kind of doubtful I also put it under the this year like just in case you don't move this month Lord and I kept watching like okay be open KB and there was an option that kind of was like okay maybe it's this one but it still just didn't feel like like absolutely yes um and so I kept like being open like Lord okay I'm just I'm trying to have crazy faith that you're gonna show me I asked for a church home I've been asking for a church home are you gonna do it and literally y'all ah I have goosebumps just thinking about it it was I think the the second to last week of the month or the last week of um, a month from August 18th and um, I had defended my candidacy and I actually had a group of my friends we all went out to celebrate because I had passed my candidacy and we were out probably like nine ish we met and we stayed out till almost midnight and so one of my friends ended up saying like okay y'all I'm gonna head out like I gotta get ready for church um, tomorrow and something in me was like you should ask her where she goes to her church because in my mind I'm like I've been to every church in Columbus that's what it felt like so it was like she probably gonna say something I already been to but you know we have similar vibe and we were cool so I was like you know maybe you know whatever church she goes to maybe I can give that church another try because I probably have been there already hilarious right so I just asked her like oh um what church do you go to and she said uh, one church and I was like one church i was like i haven't heard of that church i was like i feel like i've been at every church in columbus what do you mean one church i was like where's that so she told me where it's at and she was kind of giving me a little info and so literally we're sitting out like on a rooftop like just chilling i just decided to ask her what church she was going to because she said she was going home to get in the bed so she could go to church all of this right just a random occurrence and she's telling me about it and i'm like okay well you know maybe i'll try and in my head i'm kind of like already over it y'all that's so awful but i was already kind of like it's about to be the same old same old but i was like okay she's like yeah you can come with me if you want i'm like yeah okay so um she texted me the info that morning and i was like okay so i go y'all i park i sit with her and when i tell you the service was like this what y'all do in here one church like it was actually baptism sunday so they call it one big party and it literally was like a full-on celebration for those who had, you know, decided to make a public declaration of their faith by getting baptized. As part of my crazy faith list, I did this somewhere else. I don't know. I don't think I did it in my phone. But I literally wrote out like, Lord, okay, crazy faith. I'm going to be specific. This is what I'm praying for in a church. So while I was there, I was kind of just really in it and enjoying it. I had an incredible time. Everybody was so genuine. The people that greeted me, like it just was all like, oh my gosh. So we left out and we met some of her other friends in the lobby and she was like, how'd you like it? And I was like, uh, I'm coming back so I left and I just was stunned like I called my mom like this was amazing like I'm telling everybody just super excited and then later on I went through my list and literally I kid you not every single thing to a T was checked off of this list every single thing pretty much everything on this list was checked off and I was like this is unbelievable and I think I don't know if I checked the list officially until the second time that I went um and the word was so 
like it was so deep it was so rooted in the word it was not fluff it was not an inspirational talk it was rooted in the word and our pastor so very clearly articulates the word but he does it in a very modern way in a very relatable way to our generation so i'm sitting there literally feeling like i'm in discipleship class because i i started bringing a notebook y'all like literally it's in, it's in uh my office but a notepad because he would be saying something like oh my gosh I never knew that oh my gosh like he he would just point out all this stuff and so you felt like oh my gosh I'm getting such a clear understanding of the word but then also making it practical and relatable to my life he's a G y'all he's a G he's a G he's a G for that okay I'm just gonna say it. he is incredible and 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 i say that not in a boastful type way i say that because it was exactly what i needed to reach my soul in that season um and so as i continued to go i just was like this is it i have to be a part of this like this is incredible he actually spoke a word when i was going through a season of depression um last fall and um it was Ooh, I think I talked about it on here, my 25-year crisis, if you haven't seen that video. Um, and I was just kind of trying to come out of that, but it had gotten pretty dark. And he preached a word that literally had your girl wailing in the back row, like wailing. And it just, it broke me down so well and then filled in all the cracks. It was just like, ooh, yeah that word right there and I went down for prayer and I knew this is where I need to be it has been confirmed 10,000 11 million times every time I come here I'm looking forward to the next time I can be here I'm mad they don't have Wednesday night service Bible study whatever so I can come for that I'm just like how else can I fill up my week with this place and with the presence of God that is in this place I need it I need it I need it I need it so um they had like a team night and I actually went to the team night to get more information about like um, joining ministry and um, doing the next steps, you know, to get integrated into the church. I just, I, I went because I wanted that info and I was like, I, I want to serve. Like this is the last little puzzle piece that I've been trying to fit in. I want to serve Lord. You know my heart is to serve. So if this fits, this is where I'm supposed to be, y'all. Ah, it'll make me misty if I let it. I grew up in ministry, multiple ministries every year of my life until high school and i haven't served in church ministry as a part of a team since 2011 so it has been nine years nine years and now i have the opportunity to get connected to ministry again um and so i wanted to start off kind of soft and just like get myself back into the mix of things um and so I do the check-in host. If you're ever at one church in Gahanna, Ohio, I am the, the kids' side check-in host. And I stand there and check in all the new families and get to say hi to all the cute little babies that come in uh, for our children's ministry every morning and greet the people that come in that door. And y'all, it is, it sounds minor, but it is everything. Like, there have been so many times over the last month where I pull up and I have tears in my eyes already because it just feels so good like walking in and somebody knowing my name and expecting me to be there and being a part of a community and and knowing that there's so much that pleases God about this place and that they're reaching souls for Christ and that I have an opportunity to be a part of that and that God answered my prayer my crazy faith prayer and when I look back on it and I think okay Lord why on earth did I have to go so long without a church home like what was the purpose in that why is that how this went down why did it take all this time I had never heard of this place I'm going to all these different churches and it took this random occurrence with a friend to find out about this church why why did I have to go through this and I was talking to Sue with one of my friends and it was actually awesome because she shared with me that this experience makes my heart tender to those who are going through similar experiences and i think if it takes nothing to see people talking about church hurt and how church has been a painful place for a lot of people and because i grew up kind of in a privileged spot as far as church you know 
being essentially grandfathered into a church community and having that really deep experience and you know church family being like literally blood family and we all grew up together and all that because I had that very unique amazing experience I didn't necessarily know what it was like to be on the other side of that to have to approach a church for the first time and just be like I'm nobody y'all don't know me y'all don't know my parents but um hi uh, <laughs> can I be a part of this place and it makes my heart tender to those who have found themselves in a similar season it makes my heart tender to people who may have a hesitation toward church and you know may have concerns about church and it made me also open my eyes and look critically at the church and not just take everything face value we are still humans we are still flawed we still mess up and so it, it, it causes me to to listen intently to be more intentional about the time that I spend at church. It, it made me more intentional about serving. Because if I'm being honest, I did love serving growing up, but I also served because my mama told me I had to. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't an expectation. Like, y'all gonna do something. You pick a ministry, but you gonna be in ministry. Whereas now, I, f I find myself serving because I'm craving the opportunity to pour back into the people that come to this church. And also to build church community with others and really have people that I feel like oh I'm excited to serve with you I'm excited to grow with you in the body of Christ and just be a part of the body of Christ like it's a it's my whole lens y'all toward church towards church community toward all of it is so different now and I think that is why the Lord helped me through that season so yeah I am just super humbled and I'm super grateful and the Lord is blessing y'all I I feel like if if you watch me on Instagram a uh, shameless plug follow me on Instagram if you don't you'll see a lot of the in-betweens um, between my YouTube videos but any Sunday that I'm in town and going to church which is most of them I am posting them on my Instagram story I am talking them up I'm posting my little boomerangs from when I get out of service and I'm just hyped because service was fire like it's just, it's such a blessing, y'all. It's almost hard to believe that this church has been sitting around here and I never knew. Um, but I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to be in ministry for y'all ha that have been following this and praying with me. Thank you so much to those of you who are in the comment section on that first video telling me you were praying for me, telling me you understand, encouraging me. Like, I really, truly appreciate that. And I think all of our prayers together got me to where I am now. So this millennial is finally, <laughs> finally back in church and it feels amazing to have a church home so that was me updating you all i feel like this video is gonna be super long i'll try to cut it down but if not you know it's just gonna be a long one make sure that you're subscribed and have the notification bell on give this a like if you enjoyed um, my story my testimony check out the first video if you haven't all that good stuff and i will see you guys in the next video bye